Hi there. Welcome to Brose, just a couple of bros drinking rosé and talking fitness. I'm your host, Mike Garrity, the strongest comedian in the Gamma Quadrant, and I'm here with my co-host, Dr. D, uh, the smartest guy that I know. Oh. Thank it's you. true. Well, You're welcome. Not a compliment. No. <laughs> at all. Uh, you know the drill. You guys send in questions, and, and we answer them. And full disclosure, I've... I wrote most of them. <laughs> so here we go. We're going to go. Here's the, uh, the hot three we're doing today. So I'm trying to uh, uh, increase the number of pull-ups that I can do. And I have been going until failure and then doing slow eccentrics uh, to finish that off for about two months now. But the pull-up number that I can do is exactly the same, maybe even less, because I'm fatter now. Uh, why can't I get stronger? Uh, you haven't trained to be stronger. That's the easy answer. Definitely some follow-ups yep. for that. I'm sure. Um, <clears throat> all right. Next question. You are training for a marathon. You are. And you're only allowed to do one exercise to train for it. And here are your options. Long distance running or sprints. Which do you pick? Long distance running. Good thing I'm not your coach. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I'm not lifting heavy enough weights because I'm too concerned with making sure my form and tempo is perfect. Yeah. Would it be beneficial to go heavier and maybe sacrifice some form and tempo a little bit? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. All right, well, that honestly is confusing for me, but good thing <laughs> we have uh, an entire show to talk about it. Okay. All right, let's, uh, let's get going at the top here. Oh, this is the pull-ups one. Mm-hmm. All right, I've been doing, uh, I'm doing an eight by eight stimulus program right now eight sets of eight reps high density low intensity and i can do about four pull-ups in mm -hmm. my first set everything else is just starting at the top slow eccentrics down yeah my, am i doing and in uh it's fine for the stimulus but also i'd be nice if my pull-ups went higher yeah the, the, they're on opposite ends of the so what you're doing if you said hey i'm doing an eight by eight program should my chins get better my answer would unequivocally be no Ah. Um, and, and the reason is, so is I'm not broken. No, the, the eight by science eight, is broken, right? The eight by eight program is where you're using about 60% of a, of a one RM and you're doing eight reps and you're giving yourself 15 to 30 seconds in between. And you're going to hit maybe four of these types of exercises. That is something that creates a fair bit of movement in a short period of time. We call that density and density does not make you stronger except that cardiovascular or things that might be more metabolic. It will train that stimulus. Okay, then just tell me how to be stronger. Lift more weight. I mean, in, in, you can't in get this, heavier than how heavy I am. <laughs> you're pretty heavy. Uh, the, no, but in reality, the, there's a complexity to the chin as an exercise. So if what you're trying to do is increase the outcome of that, of that exercise, you've got to train the muscles that are associated with it. And so I would give you a program that would probably take you about three to four months, periodize it through where we train higher levels of intensity, so more load in areas and in variations that would strengthen the muscles responsible for completing that lift. And so this is a very common thing that we see, not only with the chin up, but with lots of things where people are like, hey, I'm moving a lot. I feel like I'm working really hard but my outcomes aren't there. And it's like, yeah, well, you're- Can I just you're get not, stronger at doing pull-ups by doing pull-ups? Uh, if you are able to complete them. So like if I can do four, do four, rest three, four minutes, then do four again? If, in part, if you I were- I just made that up. That's yeah, called okay. the Garrity Protocol. If you are able to perform the chin up, okay? And it's a high level of intensity for you, you could get much better at it. But if you can't really complete them, Let's then- Let's say you can do four. If you can do four, you can make a little bit of progress at it. If what you're doing is clustering or you can add a little weight and change the grip positions to get a little bit better at them. But if you want to make yourself better at the chin up as a whole, we have to look at it and think of it like a sport. And that is we have to train lagging body parts to make ourselves better at it. And that's something that goes beyond just the movement of the chin up. It's an important part of it, but it's not the whole All right. shebang. Let's go back and forth and point out each other's body parts that we think are lagging. You go first. <laughs> so your scapular retractor, so obviously your lats, uh, your teres minor, your teres major, 
Um, the, the lower divisions of the, of the trap, which are down in the back, what's known as your trap three. My turn. I think your attitude is the one that's lagging. Here's what I think. I think you should accept my challenge to have me write you a chin-up program, and you should do it, document it on social media, and show your change over the next three months. And then that'll make me look like an upside-down triangle when my shirt's off. Sure. Right? Yeah. Good. I'm going for that tinky winky bod. <laughs> It'll be good for you though. All right. Oh, here's the marathon question. Long distance running or sprints? I see my guess as a, uh, uh, not an expert would have been sprints. That's why you're make that not an expert. Make the, engines, make the engine stronger. Put a bigger engine in the car. No, I mean, there's benefits and there's time to do sprints to, to improve someone's speed. But if what you are gonna do is, you know, repeat, a stride length and frequency over 26.2 miles, the only way you're gonna get there is by pushing yourself in that aerobic capacity for longer. So you start with you know five and 10 and 15 mile runs, practice runs, you add the miles, add the volume. It's like, it's like weight training. There's a load component to it. There is a volume component to endurance training. But if you're gonna train for a marathon, you have to run the miles. Do you think that is something marathon runners should add is some sprints? I think some of the elite ones do. All right, yeah. well, here's my next question that I'm just coming up with right now. Long distance running or weightlifting, and those are your only two options. You can't do them both. Long distance running. Still? Because it, yeah, because it's a, it's, it is... Now, if you ask me if I would weight train or marathon run to lose body fat, it would unequivocally be weight training. Huh. But if it's purely to complete the activity of a marathon, it would be to run the miles and do the... Okay, final question. You have to go 26 miles. Uh, what, how long is a marathon? 26.2. You got to go 26 point miles, uh, 26.2 miles. Are you going uh, running or are you going rollerblades? See, that was a trick question because the right answer was rollerblades. But if you did own rollerblades, I would have punched you in the head. Yeah, as you should. Um, next question. And first of all, I have to keep writing these because the, you guys are not sending anything in that has anything to do with me, so I have to rewrite all of them. Uh, I am capable of lifting much, much heavier weight than I am. But if I do that, I can't quite keep the, the slow tempo that I'm, that I'm trying to get right now, mm -hmm. and my form's going to suffer a little bit. And that's kind of how I, you know, I've been taught to define failure uh, is when you can no longer keep good form or tempo. Yeah. So... You know, should I say F word it and, and throw on some weight and, and forget the form and tempo a little bit? Or how do I find that medium? Yeah. Where, where do I live? Where should I move? Uh, Let's be roommates. You should live somewhere in the, dis in the middle distance between art and science. So the, the science piece of it, when you're talking about slowing your tempos, and the reason we do that is because you are infinitely stronger at lowering a weight than you are at picking it up. Right, you can you can lower something at a higher weight than you can lift off the ground. And this is gravity's helping you, right? In part, yeah. It, and so, what we do to try to compensate for that is slow down the amount of time it takes you to to lower a weight, right? And we call that the eccentric tempo. Um, and so, that's just taking advantage of the the load and making sure that you spend enough time under tension to achieve your goal. And that's really positive. The downside is is that if you're so precious with the posture and that's important dynamic posture is important uh you kind of got to break a few eggs you got to get yourself to the spot where you do see failure uh, and you find that limit you push it a little bit you'd rather be on the side where if you have eight reps to do you know you you got eight maybe you got seven so you know that you're at the right load as opposed to leaving a couple extra reps in reserve we're talking just results not hurting like i i'm yeah i was under the mind of if i keep perfect tempo and perfect form, that's how to get better results. But, but that I'm, was good for you, Mike, because when I met you, there was very little good about your form. Uh, okay, folks, elephant in the room. Dustin's my trainer, coach. Okay. Trainer, coach, warrior, poet. <laughs> <laughs> but, you, but what happens for people is they're on one end or the other, okay? Not to make anybody feel bad, but... Either you are all effort and on one end of the spectrum, it's all effort and 
just dog crap technique yeah. or on the other end they're you know it's glovey shoes and all technique and there's no load on the bar and what you really want to do is be real with yourself about which end of that spectrum you're on and just spend a little bit more time on the other end in six months my goal is to kick a hole through a car well i've seen you do that <laughs> that's brose thank you so much for joining us i have been mike garrity with dr d and don't forget like subscribe five star reviews um if you can fit in six <laughs> <laughs>